Hi guys, welcome back to A Bus and Beyond. And today we are at a very cold Dolphin Motorhomes here on the south coast in England to check out this Ranger R535. Let's go and have a look. So starting at the front, this is based on a Fiat Talento. I think this is the first time we've ever featured a Fiat Talento on the channel. This is the same uh, basic vehicle as the Vauxhall variant and the Citroen variant, again, just like the bigger vans, but this is much smaller transit and uh, transporter size van. It's got a 1.6 diesel engine uh, and that's fitted to a manual gearbox. This current version is actually a 2018 van, but it's only done about 16,000 miles. So it's not been very far in its life. Let's have a look around the side. So on the driver's side, you can see we're finished in a metallic silver paintwork. It's got 17 inch black alloy wheels on this particular model. You can actually see that this is fitted with running boards as well, which just help you step up into the van a little bit easier. Also makes it look a little bit lower as well. This Ranger has got uh, sliding doors on both sides. So you've got one on the driver's side and one on the passenger side. Here, you can see the outlet for the boiler on board and straight away, you can see that the pop top opens the reverse way as well. The Ranger is fitted with a tailgate, which gives you a bit of protection when it's raining and you want to pot around at the back here. Also, you can see there is a Fiamma bike rack fitted to this one as well. As we move around the side, also underneath is the outlet for the uh, water tank, so you just turn that to drain your water out. As we move from the back, you can see the outlet for the electrical hookup, so that's for your mains power. Again, like I said, we've got another sliding door here on the passenger side. They are opening windows on the doors on both sides. And then also above that, we've got a wind out Fiamma awning as well. But what you all wanna see is what it's like inside. So let's take a look. Well, we're finally in from the cold outside. But before we take a look inside, I'd just like to tell you all about our wonderful sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN. Now what VPN is, is a virtual private network. So in basic terms, it keeps you safe whilst you're browsing online. It encrypts all your data and also allows you to access stuff that isn't normally available in your country. One of the most important things about a VPN is when you're traveling in a camper van just like this, you're often using public networks. If, for example, you're checking your online banking, your data could quite easily be stolen by hackers. If you're using a VPN like Surfshark, your data is encrypted and therefore can't be seen by anybody else, making it completely safe to use public Wi-Fi. Another great thing about Surfshark is you can access films that wouldn't normally be available in your country. For example, I love the film Shawshank Redemption. It's not available on Netflix here in uh, the UK. However, we did find out that it is available in Canada. So if you change your location within the app to Canada, the VPN magically makes your system believe that you're in Canada and allows you to watch Shawshank Redemption on Netflix. Also, it works the other way. So if you're away traveling in a different country, if you wanna watch something like Lizzie's favorite series, The Crown, uh, you can do just by changing your location back to the UK. Another really great feature is if you're shopping for, say, Euro Tunnel or ferry tickets, it can sometimes be cheaper if you're buying the tickets from France rather than from the UK. So you can make the internet believe that you are in France rather than in the UK and therefore get those cheaper tickets. So if you are interested in trying out Surfshark, click the link in the description below or use our discount code, a bus and beyond, and that will give you a whopping 83% discount and also three months for free and if that's not enough when you try any subscription you get a free 30-day money-back guarantee just to ensure that you are happy with your subscription thank you very much to surfshark for sponsoring this video right let's have a look 
at the inside of this van. So starting off in the cab area, manual gearbox as we spoke about before, it's a six speed manual gearbox. Shh, <laughs> mated to that uh, 1.6 diesel uh, engine. So yeah, you've got steering wheel controls for your uh, cruise control and also for your radio, old school. Well, the controls are old school for the radio behind. They used to have that in a Clio where you could change the volume with your fingers. Was, I quite liked it. But yeah, it's pretty old school. Um, you've also got air conditioning in this one, uh, just below the infotainment system, which also has sat nav as well built into it. It's a fairly small screen, but it does have all the stuff there. This is the first time for a long time that we've been in a van that doesn't actually have captain's chairs. So you'll see why when we move further back, there are no captain's chairs, but you do have um, an armrest on one side, and also they have been reupholstered in a fairly light, uh, I don't think it's actually leather, it's more of like a fake leather, but they're comfortable enough. And also, because we're always on the lookout for cup holders, you do have a cup holder either side as well. Let's have a look further back. Okay, starting on the driver's side. So just behind the driver's seat, we've got an actual full dinette. Usually these are half dinettes, but you've actually got a full dinette. You've got um, two travel seats this side, so these are belted seats. Uh, fairly upright, but not too bad actually. This nearest one obviously you have that issue that you do with most of these types of vans where you've got a little bit of a headroom issue just because of the pop top cutting in uh, but you like I say you've got another couple of seats that side they are not travel seats but when you're having your dinner or lunch it does give you somewhere else to sit there's a socket in the floor which is where you put your table leg and the table will slot in here so all four of you can sit around and uh, and eat your dinner as we said before, there is a sliding door on this side, which is actually quite nice, I imagine, in the summer, perhaps not today, but you can have both sides open, or you could probably have an awning connected to that side, but still have access in and out of the van without going through the awning, or a bit of fresh air coming through, so that's quite nice. You've got opening windows on this side as well, so you just twist that and then slide it back. It's quite a good um, setup, actually, that, that works quite well. Sometimes they can be quite difficult to do, but nice I like that and then above the window you've also got uh, an LED light as well now for one of your berths the dinette does actually turn into a bed you use the table to make a flat surface and rearrange the cushions just to make a, a relatively small bed also underneath this side of the dinette that is where the um, water tank is oh, I need to let me open the door so you can see that Ta -da! And you can see some legs there for making up the bed as well. I was going to sneeze. No, it's gone. But just behind the passenger seat, you've actually got another little stool as well. It doesn't move, it's just somewhere to sit. But you do have a little bit of storage under there. And also, there's this claw. The claw! That's actually um, just a tripod. Uh, so you can actually put the table leg in there and put the table outside as well so it gives you a bit of flexibility or you could grab people with it uh, as with that reverse pop top the actual most of the headroom is actually at the back of the van and you'll see why as we move further back but on the passenger side you actually have the kitchen so just above the kitchen there is an arm for your TV so you can mount that on there and also put it away uh, flush when you're not using it. At the top you've got a two burner hob with electric ignition and also uh, a sink that is attached to the, the hob. It also has hot and cold water in this van. It's actually quite a bit of worktop storage here which is quite nice. Uh, plenty of space to prep your food but uh, yeah let's have a look underneath the worktop. So right at the front of the kitchen, you've actually got these timbre doors. So this one opens all the way around and you've got space for uh, a few tins and biscuits, that kind of thing up at the top here. It's also got this little rail that goes around just to stop things from sliding. And then down at the bottom, you've actually got four cutouts for bottles of wine. As you move further back, you've got another timbre door, which is uh, one half of the cupboard. It's a pretty big cupboard actually. So you've got a shelf in there, and then obviously space down the bottom, and then you can also open this side. <laughs> and then as you move further back, 
I can get get back here. It's been a little bit tight in the back here. <laughs> You've got uh, plenty of drawers. So there's a really small one right at the end here, which is probably for cutlery. And then you've got, well, it, it looks like three big drawers underneath, but you've got two big drawers. The top two are big, pretty big. And then the bottom one actually has access to isolators for things like electrical circuits and gas, that kind of stuff. So the cupboard's pretty big, uh, but yeah, not a huge amount of storage and a lot of T6s and stuff have cupboards up here, but there isn't any on, on this one. Right at the back, uh, just next to the sink, you've got uh, a three pin plug. You've also got a 12 volt socket, which is rated at just 120 watts. And then you've also got a USB, original USB A socket as well. And then just behind those sockets, you've actually got the main control panel. So this is where you isolate stuff or turn on the lights, that kind of thing. Also your water pump, that's all controlled from this central control panel. Above that, you've got um, the boiler control for your Truma boiler. So you can turn that on. You can do a mixture of gas or you can do a mixture, sorry, a mixture of gas and electric or just gas or just electric. It's depending on whether you're plugged in or not. You also have a fairly big countertop at the back here. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure whether you would prep stuff there for food. I don't know really. However, it is above the position for the fridge, which is quite unusual. Not seen one back here before. That's an isotherm fridge. So you have a fridge compartment and then a small freezer compartment as well. Okay, I've actually nabbed the camera off Lizzie because it's a little bit too tight back here to get the, the shots that we're after. But this is why you have that reverse pop top in this camper van. So you can see you've got an actual fully fitted cassette toilet right at the back of the, the camper. So yeah, you've got electric flush, as you can see by the blue button. A decent sized toilet actually. And then you've got a shower tray right at the bottom. This here is actually where you store your table and then above that you can see that's where the actual table leg is stored. That there is a smoke detector I think, maybe carbon monoxide detector. So just in front of the toilet you've also got a stainless steel sink and this is a one of those tap shower combined things so you pull that out there's your hose and you can have a shower. So I'm just trying to see where you would actually connect the shower because a lot of these when they have the pop top in they have access for uh, a shower curtain to go around but I can't actually see where you put the shower curtain on this one maybe you just accept that things get wet <laughs> I'm not sure yeah, yeah usually you can see around the top here or something there's like press studs where where you would uh, put your shower curtain there is a door it's like a waist height door so protect your modesty a bit when you're using the toilet provided you don't leave that window wide open <laughs> but yeah we've also got right next to the shower and um, sink there you've got a little cupboard so you can put a few bits in there there's also a, you can see a little light and then also down the bottom here you've got another little cupboard and that's also where you put your loo roll as well stop it getting wet if you do choose to have a shower. I'd say what most people would do if they were going to use sh the shower in this, they'd probably pull the hose right out, out the back of the van, put the tailgate up and maybe have a shower out the back there. That's certainly what I would do anyway. So I know what you're all thinking, where on earth do you put your clothes? Now I suppose you could possibly use that shelf at the back there, uh, put your clothes on there. Or I was thinking, you've got this slim cupboard here and I thought well maybe that's what you could use it's not a huge amount of storage but maybe you could hang stuff in here however <laughs> what I've actually found in here that's actually what you use to build the other two berth bed down the bottom so you don't use that table you use this arrangement in here so yeah I think 
probably what's best is you remove that and probably use this as a bit more of a tuba fan because there just is not enough storage to store your cloves in here unless you can think of another way unless you have a, a a soft bag on the back a waterproof bag on the bike rack or something but yeah it's pretty limiting on the amount of storage that you've got in here right so let's have a look at the pop top so as we said a few times it's a reverse uh, opening pop top it's actually got a zip all the way around so you can open all the canvas completely out and uh, yeah have lots of fresh air in here you see right at the back here you've got an opening uh, like screen window it is actually just a net so it, it's quite big so I think bugs will quite easily still get through that but it is open to the elements you can feel a breeze coming through that we have a bungee on our t6.1 which helps bring it the canvas all in when you put the the roof down however this actually got all that built in you can see it not seen that before you've got on hydraulic struts you've got the actual bed so as you pull that down that then gives you your bed up the top and it's pretty big actually it doesn't have slats so you've got a fixed board on the bottom and maybe a one and a half inch thick mattress so also stored at the top here are the cushions for making up that bottom bed so that bottom bed although it's probably useful to have four berth in here it really does take up a lot of space what we've using the boards in there and also cushions that are stored at the top there so you've also got right at the top little vents just to keep a bit of circulation in the van but most interestingly uh, at the far end which is the shallower end is actually where the reading lights are so I'm a bit, I wouldn't want to be facing that way I don't think we've always slept with our heads at the bigger end of the pop top so you don't feel quite so claustrophobic but it is quite a big pop top but um, yeah I would not sleep that way right let's have a look in the boot before we do that look at the the way the uh, struts work on this pop top I've never seen that before usually they're on the side and raise it up that way but they're like a scissored interesting but yeah let's have a look inside here so it's quite a um, heavy uh, tailgate just because it's got this bike rack on and you just need to obviously make sure that it is going to stay up which it moves a bit but then when you he says there we go it stayed <laughs> so you can see all this um, bathroom area and toilet that kind of stuff but again there isn't any storage in the back here so you basically got I think you've got to wear everything that you're going to take on holiday with you all the time yeah, just take it off when you don't need it you've got your toilet here so that's the access to the cassette but you need to empty that that's that shelf that we spoke about you can see here and again access to the um, electrical shut off points and all that kind of thing you actually see your battery and then also you've got isolators for your electrical system inside there and then in the bottom here this is where you put your gas bottle so your gas bottle would go in there and attach similar to what you have in a California and then that bit there which had me stumped for a while is actually the compressor for the fridge which is built into this part here so yeah that's that's what all that stuff is really So there we have it there's a look at the ranger r535 here at dolphin motorhomes again a huge thank you to dolphin for letting us come and film what do you think to this just under forty-two thousand pound this particular model um what do you think is it a viable alternative to your standard layout that we see all the time with your rock and roll bed or or does it just not work for you let us know in the comments below and if you've enjoyed this video please like and consider subscribing because it really does help us out 
Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video. Cheers. Ha, ha, ha.